It's not always easy to create convincing CGI effects. Over the years I've learned a few tricks and today we'll take a look at one of them. I call this one the Magic 3. The Magic 3? What a silly name, isn't it? You will be glad to hear that I totally made it up. But there is some reasoning behind it, let me explain. Let's say we want to create a simple landscape. A quick and easy way to get going is to use noise, which gives us continuous values between 0 and 1. Map these to height and we've got ourselves a rudimentary landscape. Although this noise does not repeat, it still looks repetitive in a way. Because it has the same frequency and overall look throughout. How boring. In order to improve it, we can layer additional noises on top. They should have different frequencies than our bass noise. If we say that the bass noise creates these really big rolling hills, then a the second type of noise could create higher frequency detail. So now let's add a third noise with even smaller detail. Great, we just followed the magic three. We've layered at least three different elements on top of one another to make the result more varied, more interesting and ultimately more realistic. The idea of layering detail can be taken much further. The more detail we add, the better. It's just that we'll get diminishing returns. And three different detail passes is often a good compromise between a varied look and it not taking an eternity to set up. To further improve something like this basic landscape, we might want to introduce another type of noise. We could for example use a whirly noise as our second layer. And this gives a different result from the simplex noise we've been using. And then we can go in and use one more noise to blend between the two, further enhancing the variation. You can literally play with this stuff all day. Only we don't have a day, do we? When it comes to convincing CGI, it should really be called the Magic 95 instead of the Magic 3. Because you always find yourself adding more and more detail. I'm sure if time permitted, some of us would go down to the atomic level. I'm done with this for now. We can add a quick erosion pass to make it actually look like a landscape. And if we compare the before and after, this is indeed a big difference. Going from one single noise to a handful of different noises, mixing them all up and finally eroding it, has turned the slice of land into something that looks quite nice. I would totally want to live there. But now let's move on to a more exciting example in the simple landscape. Let's say we wanted to create a Doctor Strange style portal effect. We could spawn particles on a circle, make the circle rotate, shoot the particles out and add some turbulent wind force. Done. Beautiful, isn't it? Looks just like in the movies. Well, not really. It resembles the Doctor Strange portal effect, but it lacks all the detail and fidelity we want. It's too clean. Quite simply, it doesn't have any of that chaotic nature we witness in the real world whenever we see sparkly interdimensional portals. So how do we fix it? The answer, of course, is by adding detail. We want at least three layers of detail for each element of the visual effect. Starting out with how the particles spawn, right now they all appear in a circle. Let's turn the circle into a donut. Then we pour chocolate on top. Then we add sprinkles. Then we... Wait, what? Sorry about that, I got carried away. We explicitly do not pour chocolate on the donut. Instead we add... Noise. Yes, that's right, noise. We noise this donut up until it looks like an 80 year old bicycle wheel that's been trampled by a herd of Nepalese elephants. We can even animate the noise to make it change over time. But what did we learn a minute ago? We are never content with just a single noise. Remember, we want at least three layers of detail. So let's also noise up the thickness of this mutant donut. Make it spin, layer more noises. Yes, that's nice. Just look at the comparison to what we had originally. We went from a perfect ring shape to something that's a lot more organic. You might almost say that this new portal has character and personality. Probably a twisted one. Now we can take care of the starting velocities for all the particles. Originally we had them all shoot outwards in kind of a mathematically perfect tangent. Of course we want to vary this as well, breaking up the directions. And maybe we even want to add a few stray points. These stray points won't shoot outwards at all, instead they'll randomly float off towards the middle of the portal. We can also change the amount of particles that spawn. Instead of making the distribution uniform, we can have one section of the ring receive a lot of particles, and then gradually taper off. And as the ring rotates, the section with many particles will rotate as well, giving a nice effect. In the particle simulation, we originally used one wind force. I hate to repeat myself, but what have we learned? We're never content with just one noise or one force. We layer these dudes up, we add some gravity, affecting some particles more than others, we gradually fade off the overall amount of gravity the farther we are from the floor. We make some particles heavier than others, we make some particles live much longer than others. I usually handle these kinds of things using probabilities. It's like a lottery. Remember the stray particles I talked about earlier? 
Each particle has a 5% chance to be a stray particle. And the particles that live really long, well, about 7% of particles have incredible genes and live 3.5 times as long as an average particle. And what you don't see is how much time the tweaking of something like this takes. I'm going over it in 5 minutes, but I spend more than a day putting it together. Playing with all the different values and parameters, combining noises and forces, tweaking sim settings, etc. If you want good results, you have to put in the time, there's no way around that. Checking out the before and after, we've obviously made a huge improvement. What started as a very uniform and boring effect has now become quite chaotic. In this viewport preview, it even looks too chaotic, but once we've applied the materials, it'll all be fine. Speaking of materials, that's what we tweak now. We don't want to give every particle the same color and call it a day. We sample a color ramp, thus varying each particle's individual color. We give them random brightness and glow, we vary the glow intensity along each streak, we vary the streak length, we noise up the streak. Yes, that's right, those streaks don't have to be perfectly straight. Noise them up, I say. In the end, after all was said and done, I ended up with around about 70 notes. That's more than 3 for sure, but the Magic 3 just sounded more awesome. By the way, if you totally want to have one of these portals for yourself now, you can download my project files including rendered 4K versions with alpha channels. I'll put a link in the description. Now let's find out how we did. Clearly the primitive version is inferior, by a lot. I was able to put it together super quickly, but it looks awful. I had to add many different types of noise to vary all sorts of parameters to make this look good. The difference is even more striking when we add the effect into an actual scene. The simple version just doesn't work. To sell a visual effect like this, it's necessary to add layer upon layer of detail until the result looks convincing. I'm happy with it, and I didn't even have to go down to the atomic level after all. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.